Expanded Genetic Code, Wikipedia Audio An expanded genetic code is an artificially modified genetic code in which one or more specific codons have been reallocated to encode an amino acid that is not among the 20 common naturally encoded proteinogenic amino acids. The key prerequisites to expand the genetic code are Expanding the genetic code is an area of research of synthetic biology, an applied biological discipline whose goal is to engineer living systems for useful purposes. The genetic code expansion enriches the repertoire of useful tools available to science. Introduction It is noteworthy that the genetic code for all organisms is basically the same so that all living beings use the same genetic language. In general, the introduction of new functional unnatural amino acids into proteins of living cells breaks the universality of the genetic language, which ideally leads to alternative life forms. Proteins are produced thanks to the translational system molecules, which decode the RNA messages into a string of amino acids. The translation of genetic information contained in messenger RNA into a protein is catalyzed by ribosomes. Transfer RNAs are used as keys to decode the mRNA into its encoded polypeptide. The tRNA recognizes a specific three-nucleotide codon in the mRNA with a complementary sequence called the anticodon on one of its loops. Each three-nucleotide codon is translated into one of 20 naturally occurring amino acids. There is at least one tRNA for any codon, and sometimes multiple codons code for the same amino acid. Many trinas are compatible with several codons. An enzyme called an aminoacyl tRNA synthetase covalently attaches the amino acid to the appropriate tRNA. Most cells have a different synthetase for each amino acid. On the other hand, some bacteria have fewer than 20 aminoacyl tRNA synthetases, and introduce the missing amino acid by modification of a structurally related amino acid by an aminotransferase enzyme. A feature exploited in the expansion of the genetic code is the fact the aminoacyl tRNA synthetase often does not recognize the anticodon, but another part of the tRNA, meaning that if the anticodon were to be mutated the encoding of that amino acid would change to a new codon. In the ribosome, the information in mRNA is translated into a specific amino acid when the mRNA codon matches with the complementary anticodon of a tRNA, and the attached amino acid is added onto a growing polypeptide chain. When it is released from the ribosome, the polypeptide chain folds into a functioning protein. In order to incorporate a novel amino acid into the genetic code several changes are required. First, for successful translation of a novel amino acid, the codon to which the novel amino acid is assigned cannot already code for one of the 20 natural amino acids. Usually a nonsense codon or a 4-base codon are used. Second, a novel pair of tRNA and aminoacyl tRNA synthetase are required, these are called the orthogonal set. The orthogonal set must not crosstalk with the endogenous tRNA and synthetase sets, while still being functionally compatible with the ribosome and other components of the translation apparatus. The active site of the synthetase is modified to accept only the novel amino acid. Most often, a library of mutant synthetases is screened for one which charges the tRNA with the desired amino acid. The synthetase is also modified to recognize only the orthogonal tRNA. The tRNA synthetase pair is often engineered in other bacteria or eukaryotic cells. The non-standard amino acid to encode, an unused codon to adopt, a tRNA that recognizes this codon, and, 
a tRNA synthetase that recognizes only that tRNA and only the non-standard amino acid. In this area of research, the 20 encoded proteinogenic amino acids are referred to as standard amino acids, or alternatively as natural or canonical amino acids, while the added amino acids are called non-standard amino acids, or unnatural amino acids, or non-canonical amino acids. The first element of the system is the amino acid that is added to the genetic code of a certain strain of organism. Over 71 different NSAAs have been added to different strains of E. coli, yeast, or mammalian cells. Due to technical details, the NSAAs are generally larger than standard amino acids and most often have a phenylalanine core but with a large variety of different substituents. These allow a large repertoire of new functions, such as labeling, as a fluorescent reporter or to produce translationally protein in E. coli with eukaryotic post-translational modifications. Unnatural amino acids incorporated into proteins include heavy atom-containing amino acids to facilitate certain X-ray crystallographic studies, amino acids with novel steric-slash-packing and electronic properties, photocross-linking amino acids which can be used to probe protein-protein interactions in vitro or in vivo, keto, acetylene, azide, and buronate containing amino acids which can be used to selectively introduce a large number of biophysical probes, tags, and novel chemical functional groups. Into proteins in vitro or in vivo, redox active amino acids to probe and modulate electron transfer, photocaged and photoisomerizable amino acids to photoregulate biological processes, metal binding amino acids for catalysis and metal ion sensing, amino acids that contain fluorescent or infrared active side chains to probe protein structure and dynamics alpha-hydroxy acids and D-amino acids as probes of backbone conformation and hydrogen bonding interactions, and sulfated amino acids and mimetics of phosphorylated amino acids as probes of post-translational modifications. Availability of the non-standard amino acid requires that the organism either import it from the medium or biosynthesis it. In the first case, the unnatural amino acid is first synthesized chemically in optically pure L form. It is then added to the growth medium of the cell. Generally a library of compounds is tested to see which can be imported and incorporated, but often the various transport systems can handle unnatural amino acids with apolar side chains. In the second case, a biosynthetic paths need to be engineered. One example is an E. coli strain that biosynthesizes a novel, previously unnatural amino acid from basic carbon sources and includes this amino acid in its genetic code. Another example is the production of phosphoserine, which is a natural metabolite and as a consequence the pathway flux had to be altered to increase its production. TRNA tier tier RS pair from the Archean Methanococcus janaskii, TRNA lis lis RS pair from the Archean Pyrococcus horacoshii, TRNA glu glu RS pair from Methanocercina maize, Lusultrina synthetase from Methanobacterium thermoautotrophicum and a mutant Lusul TRNA derived from Halobacterium sp. TRNA amber PYLRS pair from the Archean Methanocercina barkeri and Methanocercina maize, TRNA amber, 3 iodoterosyl TRNA synthetase. Another element of the system is a codon to allocate to the new amino acid. A major problem for the genetic code expansion is that there are no free codons. The genetic code has a non-random layout that shows telltale signs of various phases of primordial evolution, however, it has since frozen into place and is near universally conserved. Nevertheless, 
some codons are rarer than others. In fact, in E. coli the codon usage is not equal, but presents several rare codons, the rarest being the amber stop codon. Probing protein structure and function, by using amino acids with slightly different size such as O-methyltyrosine or doncylalanine instead of tyrosine, and by inserting genetically coded reporter moieties into selected protein sites, chemical information about the protein's structure and function can be measured, probing the role of post-translational modifications in protein structure and function. By using amino acids that mimic post translational modifications such as phosphoserine. Biologically active protein can be obtained, and the site specific nature of the amino acid incorporation can lead to information on how the position, density, and distribution of protein phosphorylation affect protein function, identifying and regulating protein activity, by using photo caged amino acids. Protein function can be switched on or off by illuminating the organism, changing the mode of action of a protein. One can start with the gene for a protein that binds a certain sequence of DNA and by inserting a chemically active amino acid into the binding site, convert it to a protein that cuts the DNA rather than binding it, improving immunogenicity and overcoming self-tolerance by replacing strategically chosen tyrosines with P-nitrophenylalanine, a tolerated self-protein can be made immunogenic, selective destruction of selected cellular components, using an expanded genetic code, unnatural, destructive chemical moieties can be incorporated into proteins that target specific cellular components, producing better protein, the evolution of T7 bacteriophages on a non-evolving E. coli strain that encoded 3 iodoterosine on the amber codon, resulted in a population fitter than wild type thanks to the presence of iodoterosine in its proteome. Non-standard amino acids the possibility of reassigning codons was realized by Norman Lee ETAL in 1990, when a viable mutant strain of E. coli read through the UAG stop codon. This was possible thanks to the rarity of this codon and the fact that release factor 1 alone makes the amber codon terminate translation. Later, in the Schultz lab, the trinatir slash tyrosiltranus synthetase from Methanococcus janaskii, an archaebacterium, was used to introduce a tyrosine instead of stop, the default value of the amber codon. This was possible because of the differences between the endogenous bacterial synthases and the orthologous archaeal synthase, which do not recognize each other. Subsequently, the group evolved the orthologonal tRNA-slash-synthase pair to utilize the non-standard amino acid O-methyltyrosine. This was followed by the larger naphthylalanine and the photocross-linking benzoylphenylalanine, which proved the potential utility of the system. The amber codon is the least used codon in Escherichia coli, but hijacking it results in a substantial loss of fitness. One study in fact found that there were at least 83 peptides majorly affected by the read-through additionally, the labeling was incomplete. As a consequence, several strains have been made to reduce the fitness cost, including the removal of all amber codons from the genome. In most E. coli K12 strains for strain pedigrees there are 314 UAG stop codons. Consequently, a gargantuan amount of work has gone into the replacement of these. One approach pioneered by the group of Professor George Church from Harvard, was dubbed Mage in Cage, this relied on a multiplex transformation and subsequent strain recombination to remove all UAG codons the latter part presented a halting point in a first paper, but was overcome. This resulted in the E. coli strain C321 delta A, 
which lacks all UAG codons and RF1. This allowed an experiment to be done with this strain to make it addicted to the amino acid biphenylalanine by evolving several key enzymes to require it structurally, therefore putting its expanded genetic code under positive selection. In addition to the amber codon, rare sense codons have also been considered for use. The AG codon codes for arginine, but a strain has been successfully modified to make it code for 6N-alloxycarbonyl lysine. Another candidate is the AUA codon, which is unusual in that its respective tRNA has to differentiate against AUG that codes for methionine. In order to do this, the AUA tRNA has a special base, lysidine. The deletion of the synthase was possible thanks to the replacement of the native tRNA with that of Mycoplasma mobile. The reduced fitness is a first step towards pressuring the strain to loose all instances of AUA, allowing it to be used for genetic code expansion. Other approaches include the addition of extra base pairing or the use of orthologous ribosomes that accept in addition to the regular triplet genetic code trinas with quadruple code. This allowed the simultaneous usage of two unnatural amino acids, p azidophenylalanine and N6-carbonyl lysine, which cross-link with each other by Huizgen cycloaddition. Another key element is the tRNA-slash-synthase pair. The orthologous set of synthetase and tRNA can be mutated and screened through directed evolution to charge the tRNA with a different, even novel, amino acid. Mutations to the plasmid containing the pair can be introduced by error-prone PCR or through degenerate primers for the synthetase's active site. Selection involves multiple rounds of a two-step process where the plasmid is transferred into cells expressing chloramphenicol acetyltransferase with a premature amber codon. In the presence of toxic chloramphenicol and the non-natural amino acid, the surviving cells will have overridden the amber codon using the orthogonal tRNA amino acylated with either the standard amino acids or the non-natural one. To remove the former, the plasmid is inserted into cells with a Barnase gene with a premature amber codon but without the non-natural amino acid, removing all the orthogonal synthases that do not specifically recognize the non-natural amino acid. In addition to the recoding of the tRNA to a different codon, they can be mutated to recognize a 4-base codon, allowing additional free coding options. The non-natural amino acid, as a result, introduces diverse physicochemical and biological properties in order to be used as a tool to explore protein structure and function or to create novel or enhanced protein for practical purposes. The orthogonal pairs of synthetase and tRNA that work for one organism may not work for another as the synthetase may misaminoacylate endogenous trinus or the tRNA be misaminoacylated itself by an endogenous synthetase. As a result, the sets created to date differ between organisms. Codon Assignment Amber Codon Suppression Similarly to orthogonal trinus and aminoacyl tRNA synthetases, Orthogonal ribosomes have been engineered to work in parallel to the natural ribosomes. Orthogonal ribosomes ideally use different mRNA transcripts than their natural counterparts and ultimately should draw on a separate pool of tRNA as well. This should alleviate some of the loss of fitness which currently still arises from techniques such as amber codon suppression. Additionally, Orthogonal ribosomes can be mutated and optimized for particular tasks, like the recognition of quadruplet codons. Such an optimization is not possible, or highly disadvantageous for natural ribosomes. Rare sense codon reassignment Four base codons 
tRNA slash synthase pair. Orthogonal sets in E. coli. Orthogonal sets in yeast. In 2005 three sets of ribosomes were published, which did not recognize natural mRNA, but instead translated a separate pool of orthogonal mRNA. This was achieved by changing the recognition sequence of the mRNA, the scheindal garneau sequence, and the corresponding recognition sequence in the 16srRNA of ribosomes, the so-called anti scheindal garneau sequence. This way the base pairing, which is usually lost if either sequence is mutated, stays available. However the mutations in the 16srRNA were not limited to the obviously base pairing nucleotides of the classical anti scheindal garneau sequence. In 2007 the group of Jason W. Chin presented an orthogonal ribosome, which was optimized for amber codon suppression. The 16srRNA was mutated in such a way that it bound the release factor RF1 less strongly than the natural ribosome does. This ribosome did not eliminate the problem of lowered cell fitness caused by suppressed stop codons in natural proteins. However through the improved specificity it raised the yields of correctly synthesized target protein significantly. In 2010 the group of Jason W. Chin presented a further optimized version of the orthogonal ribosome. The RiboQ is a 16srRNA optimized to recognize ternas, which have quadruplet anticodons to recognize quadruplet codons, instead of the natural triplet codons. With this approach the number of possible codons rises from 64 to 256. Even accounting for a variety of stop codons, more than 200 different amino acids could potentially be encoded this way. Orthogonal sets in mammalian cells the orthogonal ribosomes described above all focus on optimizing the 16srRNA. Thus far, this optimized 16srRNA was combined with natural large subunits to form orthogonal ribosomes. If the 23's rRNA, the main RNA component of the large ribosomal subunit, is to be optimized as well, it had to be assured that there was no crosstalk in the assembly of orthogonal and natural ribosomes. To ensure that optimized 23's rRNA would only form into ribosomes with the optimized 16's rRNA, the two RNAs were combined into one transcript. By inserting the sequence for the 23's rRNA into a loop region of the 16's rRNA sequence, both subunits still adopt functioning folds. Since the two RNAs are linked and thus in constant proximity, they preferably bind each other, not other free-floating ribosomal subunits. In 2014 it was shown that by altering the peptidyl transferase center of the 23's rRNA, ribosomes could be created which draw on orthogonal pools of tRNA. The three end of trinas is universally conserved to be CCA. The two cytidines base pair with two guanines the 23's rRNA to bind the tRNA to the ribosome. This interaction is required for translational fidelity. However, by CO mutating the binding nucleotides in such a way, that they can still base pair, the translational fidelity can be conserved. The three end of the tRNA is mutated from CCA to CGA while two cytidine nucleotides in the ribosomes A and P sites are mutated to guanidine. This leads to ribosomes which do not accept naturally occurring trinas as substrates and to trinas, which cannot be used as substrate by natural ribosomes, to use such trinas effectively, they would have to be amino acylated by specific, orthogonal arses. Most naturally occurring ARSAs recognize the three end of their corresponding tRNA. 
Arzas for these three mutated Trinas are not available yet. Thus far, this system has only been shown to work in an in vitro translation setting where the amino acylation of the orthogonal tRNA was achieved using so-called flexizymes. Flexizymes are ribozymes with trina amino acylation activity. With an expanded genetic code, the unnatural amino acid can be genetically directed to any chosen site in the protein of interest. The high efficiency and fidelity of this process allows a better control of the placement of the modification compared to modifying the protein post-translationally, which, in general, will target all amino acids of the same type, such as the thiol group of cysteine and the amino group of lysine. Also, an expanded genetic code allows modifications to be carried out in vivo. The ability to site specifically direct lab synthesized chemical moieties into proteins allows many types of studies that would otherwise be extremely difficult, such as The expansion of the genetic code is still in its infancy. Current methodology uses only one non standard amino acid at the time whereas ideally multiple could be used. One way to achieve the encoding of multiple unnatural amino acids is by rewriting genome synthetically. In 2010, at the cost of $40 million an organism, Mycoplasma Laboratorium, was constructed that was controlled by a synthetic genome. Due to the larger genome size this is not possible with E. coli, However several methods are being developed to overcome this, such as the fragmentation of the genome into separate linear chromosomes. In addition to the elimination of the usage of rare codons, the specificity of the system needs to be increased as many tRNA recognize several codons. Another approach is to expand the number of nucleobuses to increase the coding capacity. An unnatural base pair is a design subunit of DNA which is created in a laboratory and does not occur in nature. A demonstration of UBPs were achieved in vitro by Ichiro Hiro's group at Riken Institute in Japan. In 2002, they developed an unnatural base pair between two amino 8 purine and pyridine 2-1 that functions in vitro in transcription and translation for the site-specific incorporation of non-standard amino acids into proteins. In 2006, they created 7 imidazapyridine and pyrrole 2 carbaldehyde as a third base pair for replication and transcription. Afterward, DSN41 propinyl 2 nitropyrrole was discovered as a high fidelity pair in PCR amplification. In 2013, they applied the DSPX pair to DNA aptamer generation by in vitro selection and demonstrated the genetic alphabet expansion significantly augment DNA aptamer affinities to target proteins. Orthogonal ribosomes in 2012, a group of American scientists led by Floyd Romsberg, a chemical biologist at the Scripps Research Institute in San Diego, California, published that his team designed an unnatural base pair. The two new artificial nucleotides or unnatural base pair were named D5SICS and DNOM. More technically, these artificial nucleotides bearing hydrophobic nucleobuses, feature two fused aromatic rings that form a complex or base pair in DNA. In 2014 the same team from the Scripps Research Institute reported that they synthesized a stretch of circular DNA known as a plasmid containing natural TA and CG base pairs along with the best performing UBP Romesberg's laboratory had designed and inserted it into cells of the common bacterium E. coli that successfully replicated the unnatural base pairs through multiple generations. This is the first known example of a living organism passing along an expanded genetic code to subsequent generations. 
This was in part achieved by the addition of a supportive algal gene that expresses a nucleotide triphosphate transporter which efficiently imports the triphosphates of both D56P and DNAMP into E. coli bacteria. Then, the natural bacterial replication pathways use them to accurately replicate the plasmid containing D56 DNAM. The successful incorporation of a third base pair into a living microorganism is a significant breakthrough toward the goal of greatly expanding the number of amino acids which can be encoded by DNA, thereby expanding the potential for living organisms to produce novel proteins. The artificial strings of DNA do not encode for anything yet, but scientists speculate they could be designed to manufacture new proteins which could have industrial or pharmaceutical uses. O ribosome In May 2014, researchers announced that they had successfully introduced two new artificial nucleotides into bacterial DNA and by including individual artificial nucleotides in the culture media, were able to passage the bacteria 24 times, they did not create mRNA or proteins able to use the artificial nucleotides. There have been many studies that have produced protein with non-standard amino acids, but they do not alter the genetic code. These protein, called alloprotein, are made by incubating cells with an unnatural amino acid in the absence of a similar coded amino acid in order for the former to be incorporated into protein in place of the latter, for example L-2 aminohexanoic acid for methionine. RiboX RiboQ Ribosome Stapling these studies rely on the natural promiscuous activity of the amino acyl tRNA synthetase to add to its target tRNA an unnatural amino acid similar to the natural substrate, for example methionyltrinous synthases mistaking isoleucine for methionine. In protein crystallography, for example, the addition of selenomethionine to the media of a culture of a methionine oxotrophic strain results in proteins containing selenomethionine as opposed to methionine. Another example is that photoleucine and photomethionine are added instead of leucine and methionine to cross-label protein. Similarly, some tellurium-tolerant fungi can incorporate tellurocysteine and telluromethionine into their protein instead of cysteine and methionine. The objective of expanding the genetic code is more radical as it does not replace an amino acid, but it adds one or more to the code. On the other hand, Proteomy-wide replacements are most efficiently performed by global amino acid substitutions. For example, global proteomy-wide substitutions of natural amino acids with fluorinated analogs have been attempted in E. coli and B. subtilis. A complete tryptophan substitution with theanopyrolealanine in response to 20,899 UG codons in E. coli was reported in 2015 by Budissa and Saul. Moreover, many biological phenomena such as protein folding and stability, are based on synergistic effects at many positions in the protein sequence. In this context, the SPI method generates recombinant protein variants or alloproteins directly by substitution of natural amino acids with unnatural counterparts. An amino acid oxotrophic expression host is supplemented with an amino acid analog during target protein expression. This approach avoids the pitfalls of suppression-based methods and it is superior to it in terms of efficiency, reproducibility, and an extremely simple experimental setup. Numerous studies demonstrated how global substitution of canonical amino acids with various isosteric analogs caused minimal structural perturbations but dramatic changes in thermodynamic, folding, aggregation spectral properties and enzymatic activity.
the genetic code expansion described above is in vivo. An alternative is the change of coding in vitro translation experiments. This requires the depletion of all trinas and the selective reintroduction of certain amino acylated trinas, some chemically amino acylated. There are several techniques to produce peptides chemically, generally, it is by solid phase protection chemistry. This means that any amino acid can be added into the nascent sequence. In November 2017, a team from the Scripps Research Institute reported having constructed a semi-synthetic E. coli bacteria genome using six different nucleic acids. The two extra letters form a third, unnatural base pair. The resulting organisms were able to thrive and synthesize proteins using unnatural amino acids. The unnatural base pair used is denom DTPT3. This unnatural base pair has been demonstrated previously, but this is the first report of transcription and translation of proteins using an unnatural base pair. Engineered Peptidyl Transferase Center Applications Future Recoded Synthetic Genome Expanded Genetic Alphabet Related Methods Selective pressure incorporation method for production of alloproteins. In vitro synthesis. Chemical synthesis.